Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Four Innovations Level 2 system for the 2015 and up Mustang GT. Mine is a 2016 Mustang with the performance pack and it is pro-charged with the Stage 2 kit. We're going to be eliminating the JMS BAP that my Stage 2 Pro Charger came with and we're going to be switching to a dual pump 450 liter per pump system as well as a new fuel rail from Four Innovations. This is my first install of a four system. We're going to be all learning together. My friends are going to be showing up soon. Hopefully I'll get some of them to help on camera. So my buddy Shelby's helping us do this install. He just unbolted the child seat brackets which have bolts here and here that are T50s. And in the back here we used a 15 millimeter socket and ratcheting wrench to unbolt the rest of the seat. So I believe at this point we can just pull it out and that's what we're going to try to do. Do we think we can just pull or? Yep. Yep. Let's pull it towards Mr. Shelby. Just watch the camera right behind you. Yep, you got it. Just trying to see what else is holding them. They're not bolted. Oh, there's a bolt right here we missed. So Shelby just got that last bolt and we think it's this also, a, It's also a 15. It's a 15? Yep. And then once they're down, we just pick them up, separate them, and I'll get mine out of my side of the car. That's out. And so basically it's just two tabs. You pull them and it... And it uh, so that's for disconnecting the fuel line from the original fuel pump. So yeah, that secondary clip, if we unhook that, it should come out. So the rag is to collect the fuel. That might be in that line. Yep, There's probably not a whole lot. Stripping a little bit. Yeah, I smell a little. Uh, well, it's got to go the other way. Yep. yep. Yes, sir. Try not to make sparks. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there it goes. So I don't want to. I don't want to break the. Uh, yeah, the float. Let me see if I can get another hand in here. You want, oh, you're letting the lead can, down? Can, can you hold the yeah. um, top? All right, that's got to come loose. Hang on. Just gotta, this about to clip off. Oh. There you go. So that's unhooked. So now the goal is to remove the uh, little sending unit. These I always break whenever I've done this. So Shelby is a certified NASA engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna let him attempt this. Why does gas smell good though? I like the way this is race gas too. Oh, there it goes. So you don't have any kind of like housing for that? You just pop, pop it. Yeah, in. there's. We're just gonna set. We're just gonna set it in there. That's basically what's gonna happen. Hook your sensor for the um, fuel. Um, yeah, fuel level. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it, dude. It just announced right on. Click. Damn. Well, hopefully it still works. <laughs> Now we gotta. And we're supposed to splice it into these. Yeah. So what kind of connectors are these, Shelby? Uh, so these these are um, they're called environmental splices. Um, it's for joining wires, but um, and and there's an environmental seal. So you'll see when we do these. And um, it's like a built-in heat shrink, right? Yeah, yeah. So the the heat shrink, these little tubes on the end. You'll see when we when we shrink it, it'll it'll actually seal. Mm. And and it just kind of. It's impermeable. Blue ones use the middle, the middle crimp uh, position. I usually just kind of position them, position it on there like this, and then I'll just stick it on the wire, stick it on there. Nice. Basically, puts a nice little dent in there. Oh yeah. And uh, I did aviation electronics. Aviation. So if you're not a former Navy aviation electronics person, you're probably gonna jack this up. Well, you, you probably don't have these crimp. You probably didn't steal these crimpers from wherever I got them. Then this will be bleeped out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can, you can buy these. You can buy these from Daniels. Um, Daniels makes yeah. like a bunch of really uh, neat connector repair that tools. That looks so and things good. Like that. I, I did bring a, a very special device, the BIC 1000. Um. Uh, th this is an approved tool for shrinking the environmental splices, the BIC-1000. All right, so they, they do not use the heat gun. They use the BIC-1000. You are never allowed to use an open flame on an aircraft. However, <laughs> no, this, gonna... this tool does get used frequently, or at least it used to. It is better to use a heat gun that has... Yeah, I have a heat gun. gun, I mean. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, well. The whole thing is, like, really hard to do is to... Um, 
not to char it. <laughs> these, these little these little round pieces on the end, they're gonna they're gonna seal it completely. This guy? Yep. I think. Yep. I just I just need that clip. Oh. Yep. So now we're gonna get that line reconnected. Just trying to figure out which way it goes. Go. Right. Is that on good? Yep. Nice. It's on there. Yeah. <laughs> so we just dropped the pump back in there, and now we're going to get the ring back around it. Yeah. I think that's it. That's it. Cool. So that BAP there, we're going to remove because that was only used to drive the voltage for the original fuel pump. It's no longer needed to drive voltage on here. So we basically need to remove the existing BAP wiring and reconnect the original wires together back again. Okay. So, whenever, so we, we can yeah. Un unwire. Yeah, so that. these two wires is what I'm really talking about. Because this, right. this wire is a hob switch. This goes all the way to the front of the car where the vacuum reference is. And it triggers when there's boost. All we're going to do here... Snip it right at the solder. Same deal with that one. Yeah, I'm going to cut this guy back. I'm just going to cut all the heat shrink off first. Fuel gauge. Yeah, so hopefully these two are the fuel gauge. So in theory, if we put these in and we turn it on, we should be able to get our fuel level readings. Look at this thing all stripped. <laughs> we, we made a pretty good mess. <laughs> all right, let's see if the fuel sunder still works. And we know what the fuel level is. It should be about a quarter tank. Hey, 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 hey it works. Come look at it, Shelby. We we did a thing! <laughs> for the next step, what I want to do is connect our pumps to the 4FC2 controller. For this, we're going to use ferrules, and everybody tells me it's a much better idea than tinning the wires and then pinning them down. This is the wiring harness for the pump. It comes with two sets of ground and hot wires. First thing I did is I kind of split them. So what this tool does is it is an automatic wire stripper. It'll do any gauge of wire, and it'll do a pair of wires at the same time too, so. We'll give this a shot, so we'll cut them back, let's say, that far. We can always trim it. So, boom, there you go. Okay, so the next step is to pick the right size ferrule. I don't know if you guys can see that, but these screws are surprisingly fast setting. Here comes the fun part. I've actually never used this crimper before, so you guys are going to get to see me do something new. For me, I think that's about perfect. So this is a really cool tool, and I'll show you where I got this as well. Oh wow, that is super cool. Oh, like that, that's never going to go anywhere. Oh yeah. So the next step is to go ahead and plug everything in. And guys, just to show you what happens when the set screw presses, uh, hopefully you could see it, but it flattens this. That's never going to go anywhere. If you don't at least 10, and guys have been saying even with tinning, um, essentially it'll start wiggling around from the vibration and the, the wire will start, you know, will start separating back out. You're going to start losing pumps. So when we get inside the car, we're going to put another ferrule in and uh, use that for our remote wire. So the next step is going to be to fuse and crimp a 12 inch length of wire that we're going to hook up to the battery. I already crimped on the battery connector because I wanted to try out a new tool and I'll show you guys how to use it on the grounding wire. And over here, I already cut and stripped uh, the wire so that it's exposed. This is six gauge wire. We're gonna use a six gauge ferrule and we're gonna crimp that with a slightly larger tool. So this was the tool we used earlier and now we're gonna use the Big Daddy version. 
uh, to do the six gauge wire. So for the first step, we're going to get a ferrule and we're going to kind of carefully put that on. And that's what we should see. It should be uh, nice and flush with the top there. You get it right in a place. Everything looks good. And there you go. I mean, that that is never going to go anywhere. So guys, the next step is going to be to open up this little fuse box. So you're going to squeeze, pull it out. These love to just fall out and go everywhere where you're never going to find them. Go ahead and take them off. So you should check the size and amperage of your fuse. I need an 80. That's what the instructions said. That's what's in here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our little Allen key. And we're going to take out these, uh, these little barrel things that uh, we're not going to need anymore. And then we're just going to tighten this thing down. Okay guys, so I'm going to install the ring terminal on this grounding wire. We're going to add some heat shrink and we're going to use a real big piece because this is going to deform when it crimps and we don't want to have to mess with sliding on like the little heat shrink and trying to get it to fit. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze. Okay, now that we've crimped it, we can see we've got this really neat hexagonal connection. I mean, there's no way, there's no way. Like, I could hang on that all day. So I just threw on the strut brace, and I'm doing that so I can see how I can best mount this without interfering with the strut brace. I'm thinking that we have a few different options, possibly here, maybe if we bend it and install it right here. We're going to have a vacuum source coming in here. Uh, we're going to be able to adjust our fuel pressure up here. Uh, first, we're going to install the fuel rail and get the fuel rail feeding the fuel uh, into the fuel pressure regulator. It's going to regulate the fuel as a post uh, regulator setup, and it's going to bring it back to our fuel tank, which uh, means we're converting it to a return system. So the next thing I want to do is start getting the fuel rail out of the way. get the next bracket out and once again we go for the foam the next step may get a little messy I'm gonna hope that there's not too much fuel because the car has sat we're gonna squeeze two tabs under here so there we go some fuel is gonna spill so next what we want to do is start removing the fuel rail. You're going to want an extension. You don't have to have a deep socket for this, uh, but essentially there are four 10 millimeter bolts, two on each side of the rail, and uh, you're just going to knock them off. You may have to move this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to unhook every injector connection. And I've already got mine labeled. 
Some of them you need to work in and out a little bit. If your hands are big like mine, this is uh, not super fun. So start on this side. So there's the one side, a little careful. There's gonna be fuel in this thing. So now that you get the fuel rail out of the car, the goal is to pull the injectors out and we might have to play with the size of these injectors. I'm not completely positive if we'll need these spacers, but I'm thinking we will uh, since the fuel rail is probably the same height. So yeah, the fuel rail seem to be the same height, so I'm gonna keep these adapters. I'm just gonna pull the bottom clip out. Your old fuel rail is gonna have a ton of fuel left over in it. Uh, you're gonna wanna very carefully carry it somewhere where you can dispose of it. So guys, I created a little room by unhooking this coolant hose and the coolant hose over here. Sorry I didn't record it, but it's really simple. You squeeze up here, pull up, and the hose yanks off. Uh, very easy to figure out. The reason I did it is it'll just let me um, perfectly tailor the fuel rail and then reconnect it. Uh, that way I don't have to fight the, um, the hose. I should have really unhooked the hoses in the first place. I was just being lazy. It would have made removing the factory fuel rail easier. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give everything a good wipe down. I didn't get any instructions with these. I mean, as beautiful as they are, I kind of wish, uh, and I don't mean that there were no instructions with the whole kit. That's a separate issue. And that's an issue of there are many different ways to install this particular kit. So I understand they don't provide, you know, step-by-step -step instructions, but I didn't receive a single instructional page at all on the fuel rail. It is what it is. I've been told their customer service is excellent if you call. I'm gonna try it out on Monday. I'm gonna give them a quick little call to ask about how to best feed the vacuum line. And uh, I'll let you guys know how that customer service interaction went. For now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the second rail. Now, once you get it in there, cool thing is that you can really tailor exactly how you want it so if this fuel fuel rail is like right here so maybe we kind of keep letting this piece out kind of turn it like that and then we'll snug that down on the car with a wrench so next step is this guy here and these are much the same designs so again you want to let a little out now we're going to need to clean up these injectors so you're gonna get a clean towel. If it focuses all that, you need a clean. All right, now that you got all the injectors clean, the next step is to start putting them in. And what I like to do is I like to get a little motor oil. That's why I have that can of mo tool there. And uh, give this gasket a nice, make it nice and shiny. And by gasket, I mean O-ring. <laughs> Sometimes I uh, use the wrong word. So we're gonna put that guy right in here. Uh, later on, so this is actually gonna face this way because it's the driver's side. So that's kind of how your injector is gonna work. But the cool thing is because there's no retainer, you can just swirl them around however you want once you get it on the car. So you want to kind of just finesse it. And now we're going to install the last injector. And uh, we should actually be good to reinsert those back into the car. But you should be able to now push them in. They should all just kind of go in there. So four included these uh, new bolt kits. I don't see how they're much different than the factory ones, but I guess I'll use them. That's it. So now we can take these guys.
And guys, remember, not a whole lot of torque. So once this is in place, the goal now is to fabricate all the little pieces of uh, hose and the directionality of these things. These, I think, we're just going to keep very straight and just snug them down. This one probably is good at a pretty straight angle. That back one, uh, which is going to be part of our crossover, is uh, probably going to need to get angled a little bit more. We're going to shoot all the way through. We're going to come out here, cross over, shoot all the way through, come out there, and go into the high side there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to this side. We'll do all this. So we're just going to move that to this side. And you shouldn't use a whole lot of torque. So uh, I was told before that a big mistake a lot of people make is like way over torquing. Something like that is probably going to be good. So these are Klein uh, hose cutters for fuel hose and things like that. So this factory end uh, was actually really crooked, so we're gonna recut it. So now you can see just how perfect of a cut that is versus the original one. So definitely get yourself a set of these guys. So guys, up next, there are some instructions for doing Starlight Hose. I highly recommend you follow them. Uh, pretty much it explains the correct way of doing this. So essentially, you're gonna take one of these fittings and you're gonna separate it. This is the side that compresses the hose so that it's clamped. This is the side you put the hose into. So you can see there's a little stopper ring back there. I don't know if you can completely tell. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little oil on your pinky. I'm using oil as a lubricant. I'm gonna lubricate the inside of the hose. I'm gonna lubricate the inside of here and the threads. And now I'm gonna lubricate this and the threads. And the reason is you don't want those being all dry. And then when you're using the vise and you're setting it, you don't want to just like tearing up the rubber. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this hose in here and we're going to get it all the way into the back. So once you've got this all the way in there, your goal is now to take some tape and wrap it around and keep wrapping it until you've made a circle. So when you're all the way in, the tape should be like right there, showing that you're all the way in to get the compression fitting in there. So be mindful of letting the cable or the hose rather slip out and hand tighten as much as you can. Now we're going to put this into some soft jaws. And obviously you only want to put the bottom part into the jaw. Otherwise you won't be able to, to turn it. And... And again, do not over tighten, just a little bit, just to keep it in place, guys. And that's a hard stop right there. And we can see the tape hasn't moved. So I think we're good. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And uh, once we're done, I'll show you guys how to install it. All right, guys, I've made our hose on both sides and it's ready to be installed. So what this is going to do is going to take our four innovations fuel regulator, its high pressure side, and connect it with our driver side fuel rail. So for this, and again, these things have kind of hard stops. So now this is a fully connected path from the driver side fuel rail to the fuel pressure regulator, where the regulation will happen post rail and then it'll flow down and go back to the tank. The back connection that I'm gonna show you, which is the crossover, is gonna be back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like in a few minutes, but it's the same exact thing that we just did here. You're just repeating it. So while I was assembling that rear crossover for the fuel rail and tightening it down, I also decided to throw this heat shielding on the high side of the uh, pressure system going into the regulator. The reason is it's really close to the supercharger. So from the fuel pressure regulator down, there's going to be a return that's going to come up. 
And we're gonna wanna wrap that bit too to heat shield it from the supercharger and the headers down there. As you can see, I've completed the crossover for the fuel rails. One thing that you'll note is that I was able to do a much shorter run because I didn't have to double back and do a 180. Uh, so you should be able to do the same thing. That back there is really, really tight. Um, you're just gonna have to be clever about it. I moved this hose out of the way. It's just gonna have to kind of ride on top here. I'm not gonna be using a uh, engine cover. So all we're gonna need to do now is bring the fuel in here and then bring it back over there. Another interesting thing is that these were actually melting from the heat of the car. You can see it melting where it was touching the block. One thing for sure is this is starting to look like a really cool engine bay. I love the way the fuel rails look. So I'm gonna use this opportunity before I push the car back onto the lift to install this four innovations gauge. Now normally this four gauge would be installed on the fuel pressure regulator for an accurate reading, but I'm gonna have an electronic gauge there. So really this is just kind of a, you know, like an idiot gauge just to show us we have some sort of somewhat correct pressure um, when it's in here. And we're gonna be using Loctite on this. It's a thread sealer product. All right, so the directions for this are to apply three quarters of a thread turn skipping the leading thread. Next, we're gonna do the same thing with the little set screw. So I decided another good thing to do before I throw the car in the lift is to install my uh, fuel uh, pressure sending unit into the uh, for fuel pressure regulator. They do recommend the use of one of these electronic kind of units. I've applied the thread locker and we're gonna go ahead and screw this thing in. Now, we don't wanna go too crazy. We'll just give it a couple of little turns. So guys, I got the car up on the lift and I took both the front wheels off. You really only need to take one off. I wanted to inspect the brake pads on both sides. So I popped both of them off. Uh, but you should really only need to do the driver's side because this is where we're gonna take the shroud off and create a passage for our uh, fuel lines and everything else. The first thing we're gonna need to do is remove this bolt right here. So this is gonna be a T30 socket. Next, we're gonna take care of this T30 bolt. This one is gonna be a 10 mil. As we make our way down, we're gonna grab these two guys. There's another guy right here. So we're gonna get him too. So I think I can just pull this thing down now. All right, now so to remove this panel, we're gonna hit it with this 13 mil socket. Now we gotta figure out how to run the new line through and up there. So next we're gonna to wanna to remove these two uh, retaining clips. You'll wanna not lose the, the different halves. And when you put them back in, you kinda of want to slide them in and then lock them in with this one. Now we can remove this guy up here. you will find there's a hidden, another hidden clip right next to the driver's side header. It's the header right here. So 
So now that I've lowered the car here, I'm gonna feed some fuel hose up through here, up over here, and up there. Now we find that the hose is conveniently right up here. I literally just pushed that through from that hole. So what we wanna do is make sure we have enough pulled through. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close the hood so I don't smash it. And then I'm gonna pick the car up all the way to the top and we're gonna figure out how much fuel hose we need. We're gonna mark it off, cut it, and then assemble it on the vise and reinstall it again. So in the next step, I need to figure out where my check valve and fuel filter are gonna go. So I think I'm gonna place this right here. I'm using some 3M tape to kinda sticky it and cushion it. See if that gives me the space I need to clear that shielding stuff. Yeah, that's gonna work. And so until I buy or make a bracket for this, this will have to do. So we're gonna cut the input hose right here. This will give us enough for each for the passenger fuel uh, rail, which will feed the entire system. So I'm calling that like, like right there. So guys, this is just like last time when we were doing the crossover or we were doing the uh, high side of the fuel pressure regulator. We're just gonna put ends on this and then we will run it back through the car just like we did before. Use some lubrication. There's the hard stop. That's it. So I've been able to complete my input side uh, for the fuel rail. It's gonna start right there and it's gonna go all the way to the back, cross over to the driver's side and uh, go into the fuel pressure regulator. One thing I discovered is that uh, this little guy gets in the way. I should be able to simply remove it. I'm going to use a E5. There we go. Now we have plenty of room to slip this on. So guys, here's how everything's coming together. We've got our fuel rail. This is all tightened up. Uh, it's tightened up in the back for the crossover. The new fuel rail on the driver's side is also ready. It's passing the high side. I've covered this in uh, heat shielding, like I mentioned earlier, to prevent it from being overheated by the supercharger. You can see down there that I've added extra heat shielding for that hose, uh, which is the input hose from the fuel pump. Uh, I put heat shielding uh, right where it meets the uh, the headers down there. Down here you can see how I fed it through and you can see the end of uh, of the heat shielding where the little zip tie is kind of holding it on so it doesn't scoot around. So now the thing to do is to pick the car up and uh, get the hose there fitted onto the fuel filter. Then we're going to design the rest of the fuel system which is really just two more hoses. Uh, we're going to do the return hose and we're gonna do the rest of the input hose from the fuel filter to the fuel pump. Now I'm ready to attach the input line all the way back to right here. I'm thinking we're probably gonna throw a zip tie right here just to kinda snug things in. That's it, should be set. So what I found is that if I looked on the driver's side of the tank, on the very uh, left side, right by the edge here, 
I was able to feed the hose in and it would kink and go into the cabin so I could then turn it around and aim it towards uh, the fuel pump. So I wasn't able to actually put an end on it. I'm gonna have to do that one inside the cabin of the car. Um, I know you're not supposed to do it that way and you're supposed to use the soft jaws. I just don't see a way of doing it without going through the task of dropping the drive shaft and all kinds of other stuff. So I'll just have to be real careful. So guys, now I'm trying to install the long return fuel line, which is the longest run uh, that we're going to do today. And I'm trying to get it to go towards the opening of the fuel tank. Sometimes it helps to not kink, but just give the hose a little bit of a bend, a very slight one like that. I think we're gonna run it right next to this fuel line. So let's figure out where we're gonna tuck it in. I've prepped the return line hose. There we go, that's the spot for the fuel hose so it doesn't get kinked. So now we can put this thing back together. Now the goal is to route this new hose. All right, now I'm feeding through the remaining slack into the cabin. Now we can snug this up. There are a few more things left to do. We still need to run the electrical. We also need to check for leaks after finishing the electrical. I need to set my gauges up, but we're getting really close. Oh, and before we can do all of that, we need to get inside the cabin and terminate the last two connections that go to the fuel pump. I'm super psyched. We're getting really close on this install, guys. So next, what I wanted to do was run my new gauges, which aren't really part of the four install and not really part of this video, but I'll show you anyway. Uh, and I ran the power wire for the four uh, controller, the FC2 controller. So there is a hole right here and I'll go back and I'll patch it up much nicer later. Um, but the idea is uh, you can pass everything right through here and then just kind of up and over up here. And then into the engine bay, all the wiring comes up. We can see where my uh, boost signal is picked up and uh, my fuel pressure signal. So the easiest thing to do is to poke a hole through and then stick through like a coat hanger or something you can grab onto or fish tape if you have fish tape. And basically you pull the cable through with that harder object. Once you've got one of the cables in, it's easy enough to just use electrical tape to hold the second cable and run it through in series, pull it back a little bit, attach a third cable and pull it through. You'll really only have one cable unless you're adding gauges like I did, which will mean your job is pretty easy. You just pull that first cable through and then it'll pop out inside the car and I'll show you what that looks like. So now that all the new cabling is down here, the next step is gonna be to finish the connection up front to the battery. So before lowering the Mustang, it would be really good to connect this to the terminal here. For now, I'm gonna put the cover on this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the final location for this fuse uh, after I'm done with the install because I might still move some things around, but for now, I wanna just make sure the system works.
So guys, I was able to install the last two fuel lines. It was a little bit of a pain. I really couldn't shoot it very well. Using that box wrench and the socket I was using before. And the tape showed that, you know, I didn't lose any slack. Um, not the best way to do it, but kind of what I had to do. You'll be able to do it too. Maybe you can drop the tank or do something better in your install. Now we're going to attempt to tap into this yellow gray wire for our signal. I'm using a piece of green 16 gauge wire as my remote. So now we're going to need to put a ferrule on it, so we're going to strip this piece. So we're going to put a ferrule on the end of this. If you wanted to, for fun, you could even heat shrink this, like that. Now for our controller, we're going to insert the ferrule. Give it just a little, a little pressure. So I couldn't get a good shot of me terminating it because it's so cramped here, but this is the yellow and silver wire. I used a ferrule and squeezed it on and then isolated it with heat shrink, and then I did the same thing on the other side to maintain continuity. So this green remote wire is just a T-tap, and effectively the factory connection remains. Tighten this down. Uh, everything's kind of zip tied. I'm saving this wiring just in case because I am going to want to relocate all of this uh, once I put in a roll cage. So the controller is up there. I bolted it down temporarily. Uh, you can see the green uh, remote wire. You can see the red and black uh, power and ground wires. The ground I actually used a factory hole and uh, I just some bolt I had laying around that happened to have the right thread and depth. And uh, that was really easy. I will uh, rearrange all this when I have time. So guys, up here everything was pretty simple. As soon as I had everything connected out in the back of the car, I knew that I'd be able to turn my pumps on by priming them. So I used the ignition to prime the pumps and I was able to see that I was getting pressure and I didn't see any like leaking, dripping, uh, sweating fuel anywhere. So I thought we should be uh, good to go. I continued priming it and then at the top of this fuel pressure regulator, Essentially, if you turn it clockwise, it will raise the pressure. If you turn it anti-clockwise, it'll lower it. So I was able to dial in about 55 PSI and set the jam nut. Now, when you start this, uh, which I didn't show in the video, but after I started the car, I took this off, which is our map reference that goes to our uh, behind our throttle body plate, and I made sure that I was still at 55 PSI. Uh, that ensured I had the right base uh, without a vacuum reference, that I had the right base pressure. Uh, past that, everything will go into boost. Uh, lower than that, everything will be into vacuum. So as soon as I reconnected the vacuum line, the pressure dropped to about 45 PSI. It is suggested, and it is my opinion as well, based on these suggestions, that you run this so that it sees both vacuum and boost. And the reason is the lower pressure keeps everything a little cooler. Uh, that's what the guys at Ford told me. So speaking of which, I did talk to the gentleman at Ford today. I talked to Justin. He was this uh, really nice guy. Uh, really knowledgeable, and I have to say their customer service was excellent. Uh, so he talked me through a couple of questions I had. One was he did explain how to do this adjustment with the forward pressure regulator. The other thing that he explained to me uh, was what to do about the fuel rail hardware, which was a little confusing to me. I showed you how I installed it, and I thought I did it the correct way, and he did confirm that I did it right. So these are the bolts that connect the fuel rail, and you probably saw me putting these in. So they have a washer on top and another washer, a bigger one, a flat one, at the bottom. So I was really trying to figure out why that is, and uh, the deal is uh, they didn't want the, the head of the bolt cracking uh, the little tabs. So the washer, the big flat washer, is there to distribute the load, and the little washer just kind of fits right under the head of the bolt. Uh, now you can tell that I've got the strut tower brace back on, we've got the battery reconnected with the cover back on, uh, we've got all the cabling kind of cleaned up a little bit, and uh, we should be ready to give this thing a crank. Alright, that was the fuel pumps priming, so let's get this thing started. So guys, that worked out pretty well. It started right up, uh, fuel pressure was good, everything was great. 
I uh, couldn't really film while it was running. It's just way too loud. This car is ridiculously loud and the injectors are loud now in the new fuel rail and actually the fuel pumps are kind of loud. I, I mean, it's a track car, so for me it's great. I really hope this video is useful to you guys considering the Four Innovations fuel system. There are many different ways that the system can be configured. This is just one example and how I chose to do it. Your application might be a little bit different than mine, but overall I really hope that this video helped you guys understand what you're getting yourself into and what an installation might look like. I still have a lot of tidying up to do. I need to strap down some of my hoses to make sure they don't vibrate around and loosen any fittings. But in the meantime, I also have a lot of other cool stuff that we're gonna do with this car. For one, we still need to load up the Luntune, and once they're ready with their changes, we're gonna take this thing to a dyno and see what it makes with the headers and the new tune. Beyond that, I also have a ton of new stuff to put on this car. Let me show you. So guys, check out all these goodies. On the left here, we've got our Apex wheels. These are 18 by 11. I know they're a little small diameter wise. Some people may ask, well, why would you go 18 by 11? Well, that is the restriction for the class of racing I plan on doing. And also they're very light and they allow me to run a very aggressive tire. Furthermore, racing tires generally do not go much above 18 inches. Uh, there are some 19s, uh, some very limited 20s, but generally 18 and below is gonna be your sweet spot. I can't really do 17s, my brakes are too big. Down here we also have our APR chin splitter, which we're also gonna do a video on. I have headers, sway bars in the bottom. I have some wheel spacers that are gonna go with these Apex wheels. But over here we also have a Petters coilover kit and Petters camber plates. And we're gonna be doing some interesting stuff with the camber plates. So you'll really wanna check that video out in the future. So this is another new thing that I've yet to show you guys. I picked up this Kawasaki Prairie, uh, it's a 2001 I believe, carbureted four wheel drive ATV. Right now it's only one wheel drive. It's uh, something that I'm gonna be working on with a friend of mine. And uh, we'll hopefully turn this thing around and make it work again. And I think that'll be cool content for this channel. I don't think we should be just doing my Mustang only. There's gonna be a lot of other cool stuff. And when I'm talking about other cool stuff than just the Mustang, I also mean my buddy's E36 Turbo M3. He's got this amazing car that he's gonna be bringing to the garage really soon. We're gonna be doing some really cool videos. We'll be installing that awesome diffuser, uh, a big turbo kit, uh, all kinds of amazing stuff. We're gonna be doing a fuel system. It'll be really, really neat. So if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. You're gonna really wanna see what we've got coming up next.